Why do you think 3D is here to stay in Hollywood? Um, I, I'm the 3D supervisor on the film, and uh, ultimately I think the reason why 3D is here to stay is because the technology now allows for a superior 3D presentation, um, which was something that was much harder to accomplish uh, back in the 50s and even in the, in the revival in the 80s. Um, I think the production techniques that we use today for creating 3D films allow us to create 3D that is easier to watch, it uh, doesn't cost as much to do, and, and yet we can still produce a superior product. And the audience seems to be interested in it. They seem to be you know, interested in being sort of uh, transported to new worlds and transported to uh, different stories, and I think 3D allows that in a, in a slightly different way than, a, than sort of a traditional 2D film does. What do you think needs to be done to accelerate the 3D adoption at home? Uh, 3D adoption at home, I personally believe, is really a chicken and egg problem. If people are going to um, buy the sets that are 3D capable when they see that there's plenty of content to do it. Um, there's been some talk about whether or not uh, glasses free or what are called auto stereoscopic displays is going to be the, the thing that drives it. Um, but ultimately, I think what's going to drive it is um, what, what I like to call the killer app or the killer show. Um, when you start seeing um, first run sporting events or, um, you know, for example, um, I watched some of the Olympics in 3D and I thought it was spectacular. When we start to see the Super Bowl broadcast in 3D, uh, things like that I think will help drive it. And then people will be like, oh, well now I've got my 3D set and i got my 3D glasses. What else is out there? And I think then it'll start to snowball. But just like with HD televisions, it took a while to catch on. I think the same will be true for 3D. It's not going to be instantaneous. Uh, what, do you, what impact did filming the uh, Amazing Spider-Man in native 3D uh, have on the movie that people will see on the, the home release? I think ultimately the difference between this project and maybe one that is converted is that there is a sort of a, what I call a richness of depth that whenever you look at any uh, shot in the film um, that was captured in native 3D, there's a lot of detail in, in that photography that you wouldn't normally get with a converted film. Um, Mark very specifically had an aesthetic with this film, which is he didn't want the 3D experience to be distracting. Uh, our philosophy is that if you're reminding somebody that they're watching a 3D movie, then you're really reminding them they're watching a movie. And our goal as storytellers is to keep people engaged in the story. So um, there was a certain aesthetic that we chose, which was when we're in the more emotional, dialogue-driven scenes, we're going to sort of back off on the 3D, and then we're going to amp it up. We're really going to you know, turn it up when we get into the action scenes. And I think it's in those action scenes that this really shines. How have you seen 3D rigs and technology evolve over the years? Well, I think the biggest thing is if you look at the older rigs, the ones that were used, say, in the 50s, um, or even in the 80s, one of the, the big uh, things that you couldn't easily do was change the amount of separation between the two cameras. These days, what we have um, are rigs that you can dynamically change the camera spacing, you can dynamically change the convergence, which is effectively what is on screen, what's, what's at the screen depth. Um, so the rigs themselves have improved in terms of what I would call computer control and using motion capture technology effectively, or not motion capture, but... Motion control. Motion control, yeah. thank you. Motion control technology is basically allowing us to computer control these rigs. Um, the other thing that's actually tremendously important is that the post-production tools um, allow us to use digital techniques to align the footage and manipulate the footage in ways that were impossible back in the, even in the 80s. Um, and I think the combination of high quality capture, high quality post-production tools, and high quality digital ex exhibition, whether it's at home or whether it's in the theaters, I think those three things really are tremendously important. What role will 3D games on the PlayStation 3 play in, in encouraging people to switch to 3D? Well, you, you had asked earlier about what are the driving factors towards people adopting 3D, and I had forgotten to mention uh, two key things. One is uh, gaming, uh, which right now there are many uh, video games that are 3D enabled, uh, so pe that's content people can get right now in the home. Uh, and another area that um, I think is important is uh, what I call home generated content. People having 3D cameras at home, people having 3D video cameras or still cameras. And I think um, uh, those two things are places where people can effectively get content right now and enjoy 3D in a very personal way 
uh, in contrast to the more passive role of watching a movie or watching um, television. You're participating in a video game. You are taking the pictures of your family using a, a 3D camera. What impact do you think filming in 3D at 48 frames per second like The Hobbit is going to have on, on filmmaking in movies? Well, I think the jury is still out as to whether or not the audiences are going to be accepting and embrace the 48 frames per second format or even 60 frames per second. Um, I think uh, that, that ultimately um, we're looking forward to seeing how people respond to the, the slate of films that are coming out now in, in that format. We'll see, we'll see what people think.